good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to my stoop. My name is uh, Bagnac Leroux, and I am the winemaker for Zorgfleet Wine Estate. I'm going to do something I hope that's going to be interesting. Uh, we're cooking on a old-fashioned wood wood oven. It's a Dover oven. I don't know how old it is, but I've, I've had it for many years, and uh, occasionally we use it to um, to use it as a as, you know to cook food on. Um, I initially bought it as a uh, just something to heat my house with, but it's now found um, found its place on our porch. So um, I light it up from time to time, and uh, especially when when I want to cook something that needs a lot of time, kind of slow roast and things like that. So um, it's also a lot of fun um, to make pizza in these. Um, yeah, so. I'll show you how I operate this baby. We are going to be doing a slow roasted shoulder of lamb with uh, roasted red onions. And uh, we're serving that with a um, uh, mint and chili infused yogurt. And as a side dish, I'm doing sweet potato mash. What is very important with this kind of style of of food is is the wine of course so i'm going to be serving one of the zorfit zorfit products we're having um i'm going to open a bottle of cabinet frank 2017 uh, so let's let's do that um, this wine um, has done fairly well for us in the, in the market uh, of course um, being situated in the bang valley we're surrounded by um, many estates that, that that produce wonderful Cabernet Francs. I believe it's one of the, the best areas in South Africa to produce Cabernet Franc. So we, we produced a single varietal, single cultivar um, wine, but we also use it in our estate blend. Um, uh, and uh, anyway chat about it more in depth a bit later but a young one like this it's always important to when you open it to um to give it some air you know it's 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 really quite fairly juvenile so i like to pour pour half a glass and uh just let it sit out there for for a while for a few minutes um let's first see if this Mm. nice all right <clears throat> so this is my little dough oven um i've had it for about 10 years um and it's it hasn't been used uh, recently very much uh, but i hooked it up a few months ago and started cooking with it again just for fun it's a lot of fun to make make um, food on one of these uh it takes constant constant um tinkering to get the temperature correct but um, it's uh, it's very pleasing so I'll show you how it's, I, I light it up and how I um, uh, and how I operate it so it basically it's got a it's got a fire box here um, it takes it takes the wood it's got a, a little uh, tray where the ash drops in and uh, there's a there's the, the the inside of the oven Ooh, a little creaky gonna cook you today Oi. come 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 okay I'll make sure to get him out before I light it up um, I've got a little thermometer because otherwise you actually don't know what you're working with that goes inside and yeah normally I just give it a quick dust off before I start cooking um, so let me let me clean it up get get the little hickey out there and uh, and fire her up okay All right, so I got I got the I got the little gecko, a little chicky out. So we um, we haven't we didn't harm any animals by filming this. All right, so um, I normally just pack my fire straight from the top. What's nice about these ovens, you can actually remove all these cast iron pieces, and uh, we have small kids, and uh, yeah, a little bit of. Uh, piece of blitz because I'm outside I don't really matter 
I don't mind the smoke the smoke too much when I light it up. I used to have this little oven inside and I used to be much more careful uh, lighting it up because if you don't do it properly you get the whole house filled with with smoke. So I'll just light it up since it's outside and then I'm not too con concerned. I'll put some some of the small pieces in first and gradually increase the sizes. Close the grate in the front that can that I can close. And then once I've got this whole thing going, just push the cast iron pieces back. So at first you need to there's a little there's a little uh, close that up. You can see the smoke. There's a bit there's a damping, it's like a little damping flap inside that uh, this thing channels channels the, the heat from the heat box around the oven section so you want to make sure that you have that open so um, at first uh, in the lighting phase all the all the heat escapes directly through the through the flue pipe um, otherwise it's just gonna it's just gonna um, stall you know it's not gonna light properly Yeah, at first you get a lot of smoke, but once it starts burning cleanly, uh, it doesn't smoke as much. But there's my makeshift chimney uh, pipe doing its job. Right, and a beautiful backdrop of the Simonsberg. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rub that's going to be that I'm going to rub into the um, fat side of uh, my shoulder of lamb and I'm going to do that with a pestle and mortar and I am going to put in some coriander seeds this is about a tablespoon of coriander seeds uh, I'm using some rosemary about two twigs um, just strip the leaves off I'm going to put in some um, some salt about a teaspoon some black pepper and maybe a bit more and then rub that all together Next, I'm going to prepare um, the shoulder. First, I'm going to take it out of the pot. Um, just place that on the side there. So I'm taking the shoulder out. Just put it on the on the cutting board here. Um, and I'm going to put this Le Creuset cast iron pot on on the stove um, to warm up. Um, all right. So let's leave it there for for a while. Uh, while we're waiting for that to warm up, I'm going to I'm going to cut the fat on the shoulder. Just cut it through. And that's gonna give it a lot allow the fat to run out easier and it's also going to run into the meat a bit easier and uh and also crisp nicely once it's in the oven and while i'm doing this this little oven next to me is heating up quite nicely and i wanted to you can't really with the wood i'm using I can, you can't really get the oven scorching hot it goes up to about 220 if you're lucky um but then you have to really have it burning aggressively um, so I'm going to try and get it as hot as possible and uh, once we stick stick the meat in there the, it's going to be very very hot thank you it's going to be very very hot and um, and that fat will go, go really crisp uh, um, early on and then as the stove loses its heat, its heat it'll drop down to about 160 degrees and I'll keep it around there um, but anyway so I've cut the fat. I'm going to rub the, use this rub we made and just rub it into rub it in generously into the into the 
into the shoulder like that. Mm -hmm. Another nice thing about this little stove is that you can actually, um, it's, this is the hottest side and you can, if you want to um, to, uh, regulate the temperature, you just move it to the side, you know, you move it to the right hand side. There you go. Alright, so now, I've got that all roasted a bit, I'm going to put my leg of man. So to go on top, I'm uh, slicing up more garlic. And we're going to add some some of this delicious red wine, this Cabernet Franc. I'm going to add about a, a glass full um, of it, not on top, uh, around. We want it in the bottom, so we're going to be adding. That's about that's about enough. And now. This needs to go in the oven. So I'm going to stick it in. Stick it in the oven. Close her up. Let's stick this little thermometer back. It's useful to know what you're working with. Okay, so now it took full four hours for that to cook, and I'll show you what I'll, I'm going to be uh, preparing the side dishes. Man, look at that sunset. Isn't that beautiful? That's the Simonsberg. Look at the sky. That's just absolutely amazing. So now I'm going to prepare the sweet potato and I'm cutting it into um, wedges like this with the, and I'm, I'm leaving the skin on. And um, I'm gonna stick it on a on a shallow shallow little um, uh, roasting tray. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick it in, and then we're gonna stick it in the oven. And that'll sweeten it up and make it nice and sweet. So um, I'm gonna fit it in somehow. Yeah. I'm gonna chop this one up as well, and I'm also putting some more garlic. Um, just ch chucking that in there. Uh, I'm using. Um, uh, Bulgarian yogurt, cream, creamy yogurt, double cream yogurt. I'm going to be using um, some red chili um, and uh, some mint uh, mint leaves, and also um, some lemon zest. So we're going to be grating about half of the lemon zest into. Um, into it I think that's about enough I think I've had enough <laughs> yeah I, it's about half of the, the lemon zest all right so that's gonna go in there I'm stripping leaves how much 
about this much. Um, uh, it's about two two twigs worth. Oh, it smells good. Um, so much. I'm gonna chop that fine, finely, fine. Right now for the red chili. So I'm going to remove the, the seeds. First, remove that stalky bit, uh, slice it open in the middle. All right, so all this is going into, into my. Yogurt. I'm mixing that in nicely, and that's going to go eventually with the lamb as a side, as a side dressing. All right, so I promised you um, we'd get back to the wine because that's ultimately what I do. I don't. I'm not a chef. I'm a winemaker. So, um, so yeah, so we've got our Cabernet Franc here, um, and uh, I mentioned earlier that it's a really, it's a really strong area, this Bangkok Valley in, in Stellenbosch is a very strong area for Cabernet Franc, it's got, you know, this is, in my opinion, it's got the almost ideal climate to, to ripen the fruit uh, properly, it's not, it's not too cold and it's not too hot either. Um, it's got a it's 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 cooler than than in many other parts in 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 the Boerland, so um, so it allows fruit to ripen nice nice and slowly, and most of our vineyards are also situated on south facing slopes, so it it adds to the uh, to to the, the cooler terrain that the the the, the grapes grow in. Um, so. Yeah, Cabernet Franc for me is such a is such a sensitive variety. It um, it can easily be become just another red wine if you if you over over ripen it. If you leave the grapes on the on the vines for too long, and try and if you try to make too too bold and uh, too too rich a wine, um, I've I've for the last five years increasingly. Um, harvest, uh, you know, this started to harvest the Cabernet Franc earlier and earlier uh, in the attempt to get more herbal aromas and flavors in the wine. Um, of course, there's a very fine line that you can cross if you start picking the grapes under ripe, um, and then you you can, if if your vineyards are also immature or badly. Um, you know, badly managed you can end up with a lot of aggressive herbal characters and and sometimes even bitterness in the structure so so um luckily on Zorfried our vineyards are all reaching about 20 years of age and that definitely um mellows out um, a vineyard block you know they they're nice and mature they don't have that um almost aggressive juvenile um fruit expression and 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 the the vegetal characters that you sometimes associate with that so um we, we with with the age of the vineyards we're getting away with picking earlier and earlier it's just it's just how it works so um so this wine is um is made um in well we, we had we treat it in the cellar very gently and um uh, mature all all the wine in um, small French oak barrels. Um, the, the oaking percentage is not is not aggressive. Um, we use about uh, 20, 20 to thirty percent new oak French oak, um, all tight grain uh, barrels, and the wine matures in those oak barrels for uh, between eighteen and twenty four months before bottling. Um, the, the nice thing with working with fruit from this from this farm and from this valley is that um, 
it does it, the, the wires don't need a lot of inter intervention you don't have to fine aggressively if you, if you treat the wires right you don't have to add a lot of um, uh, acid you know which is is common in a lot of areas uh, um, in South Africa we we really have to acidify our wines we we have natural natural acidities that are, are good um, and uh, you tend to get wines from this area that have a lot of structure but also finesse so it's um, it's, it's got a character of its own this, this valley I think a suiting a suiting wine for for lamb is is Cabernet Franc it's got that it's got that herbal herbal character South African lamb has also got that um, Karoo um, bossy character that 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 pairs absolutely wonderful with with Cab a good Cabernet Franc so um, I think it's a match it's a beautiful match um, but we'll see we'll see later I'm confident but we'll see later So after about two and a half hours of cooking, this is what we've got. We've got most of the juices evaporated. So we're going to add some more wine and a bit of water to the bottom of this pan so it doesn't doesn't burn and and, and completely scorch away. So I'm adding, I'm adding a bit of water to it just so we don't have this. It's going to go in for another two hours. Just add a bit of water. And more wine. And yes, I have opened another bottle. And it, oh, that's enough. It's just just to give it some more kick. I'm gonna stick that back in the dover. Got it I've got it scraped out there's the there's the um, it's got a really nice flavor it's almost like a roasted flavor to, to it there's um I've got some some parsley dollop of butter and um, a few cloves of of garlic that that roasted with the um, with the sweet potato so I'm going to to chop up the um, parsley and the garlic quickly and then that's going into the mash with the butter and and the um the, the sweet potato has been warmed up um if it's not at a nice temperature just warm it up in the mic and you can um so the butter melts once you put it in there so it goes into the into the mash and then the baby potatoes uh, i'm not sure if i'm going to use all of them I've taken the sweet potato out of the oven now. It's nice and crisp or nice and roasted, soft on the inside. We're gonna um, scrape out the fleshy bit now and and um, mash that together with some um, baby potatoes. So I'm adding some salt to this, just about yeah, to taste. So maybe a teaspoon or so. And just mashing it to a nice creamy texture and yeah it's not it's not it's a nice r rustic kind of chunky texture that you want or at least that's how we like it so there you go it's been um, just over three hours now huh? and um, let's see what we've got that um, let me get some utensils for that I need to move it into a separate pan let's get that in there okay into this pan here okay 
All right, and this juice here is, is just so good. So I'm going to, um, I've, I've um, quartered some red onions, quartered some red onions there. I'm going to add this to this um, stocky juice. And we're going to allow this to roast in the oven a little while longer. Um, so so that the um, the onions are going to sweeten and soften. They're going to be beautiful once they're done. So the, the, the liquid is going to reduce and make a very nice rich sauce. And the foil, what I need. I'm just going to cover it with the shiny side down, cover the meat. Right, so the onions have been uh, caramelizing in the in the st juice, the stock, for about an hour. Uh, so let's see what we've got. Oi. Look at that. Oh, nice. Oh, nice, nice. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I see a problem. I see a big problem. Big, big, big problem. It's like remedied. Right, so now the meat that is rest rested is going back into the, whoops, into on top of the onions and yep it's ready to be served some of the some of the caramelized onions please thank you hey look at that that's a heart attack waiting to happen mm -mm. Mm -hmm. i'm gonna add some salsa salsa a bit of that yogurt on the side it'll give it a bit of a um yours a little bit of a, a chili bite and um and the mint the mint and the citrus in, inside this the um the lemon inside the the yogurt is just going to give it it just offset the the savoriness really oh. nice Eesh, look at that beautiful all right, so the good thing is in life take time. So um, it's been about five hours of preparation and we've got, we've got this um, shoulder of lamb absolutely cooked, absolutely perfectly. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this uh, presentation. It's not, it's not, um, uh, it's very difficult to give you exact, exact uh, measurements and times and temperatures because it's, been done in a uh, like a traditional oven so uh, it it just takes a little bit of um, I guess uh, hands-on feel you know um, so I'm gonna dig in I'm sure it's gonna taste wonderful and I'm sure it's gonna work wonderfully with our sausage wine thanks for joining